Hello, today we're going to talk about chapter 14, probability rules. Yeah, I know it's super corny, but I can't help it. All right, so the first thing when it comes down to probability is you usually see charts like this. All right, so you want to make sure that you can read these. All right, on the left hand side, this is where you choose which gain. And on the top, it's, um, what is it, which type of snack. So let's say, for instance, if you're like me, you play apples to apples and you enjoy chips and salsa. So you would be one of these seven people, okay? And then there are 41 total people that like chips and salsa. And if we go in the horizontal, there are 23 that enjoy apples to apples, okay? The total is 115 people. Okay, so that's how you can read this chart. All right, so for the first one, you want to know the probability that someone plays Minecraft. So all we care about is Minecraft. We look down the total there, 25 people out of 115. There you go. Probability that you eat pizza rolls. Well, pizza rolls is vertical. 44 total people out of 115. All right, plays Minecraft and eats pizza rolls. So Minecraft and pizza rolls, that's 10 people. So 10 out of 115. Then for this one, Minecraft or eats pizza rolls. Okay, so let's look at that. Anybody that can play Minecraft, well, I guess I should circle them, all right, or they enjoy pizza rolls. It's all of these people, okay? So um, notice we just add those up. Um, goodness, I can't add here. So let's see, that's 15, 25, um, that is 20, so that's 45, 49, 59. Hope I'm right, out of 115. All right, pizza roll eater who plays Minecraft. Actually, we're gonna save these last two because that's when it gets a little bit more complicated and I'm not ready to introduce that yet. So give me a couple more slides, okay? So. Hopefully this makes sense if I'd want to do and, so both of them, that means they have to do both, okay? Or means I don't care, it's one or the other. Person who just plays Minecraft, so I don't care if they enjoy cookies. Or someone that enjoys pizza rolls and I don't care if they play Monopoly, okay? So understand the difference, all right? Because that changes how you get your probabilities here, okay? All right. First definition you really need to know is disjoint or mutually exclusive. This means they cannot occur at the same time. Okay, so either A happens or B happens and they never can happen at the same time. All right, so if I want to do the, um, so the general addition rule is A or B. So the probability of A plus the probability of B. However, when they do overlap, Understand that when I add A and when I add B, I'm adding this overlap twice, okay? So that's why you have to subtract the overlap. So whenever I do an A or B situation, all right, similar to this Minecraft or um, pizza rolls, what you do is you look at the totals, 44 and 25, all right, so that would be 69 and we subtract the overlap which is 10 there we got the same number okay that's what that means all right hopefully you understand what that that part means not just ask me in class <laughs> all right so let's use it okay all right, it's always helpful to do an example so let's see if you can set up the venn diagram okay so pause it give it a whirl all right, so we have live on campus, um, on a campus meal program or not. So if they live there and if they have a meal program, okay? So 42% do both. So this is going to have 42%. 
I know that 62% have a meal program. Well, I already have 42% accounted for. So this is going to be 20% have a meal program. Then we have 56% live on campus. Well, I already have 42% in that circle. So we take away 42% and we get 14%. So let's find these probabilities, okay? But first you should notice something. Have you found it? These probabilities add up to 100%, don't they? Ah, they don't, okay? So where does the other percentage go? Okay, hopefully you know it goes outside of the box where neither of these things occur, okay? So what is that, 14 plus 42 that's um, 56, so 76. So 76% 76 is inside the circles, so that means 24% is outside, okay? Because all of these have to add up to 100. So 14, 42, 20, 24 should all add up to 2, 4, 8, 9, yep, 10, 100%. Okay, so what's the probability that a student either lives on campus or eats on campus? Okay, so either they live on campus or they have a meal. So either in this, either one of these circles, so we do the probability that they live on campus plus the probability of the meal minus both. Okay, so that would be... Um, 56%, so 0.56 plus 0.62 minus 0.42. So we didn't even need the Venn diagram. We could have just used the percentages that they gave us. Okay, and that ends up to be 76% or 0.76. All right, now what's the probability that a student lives off campus and doesn't have a meal program? So they don't, they live outside of the circle and outside of the meal circle. So all the way on the outside, luckily we did the Venn diagram, that would be 24%, okay? The opposite of living or eating on campus, okay? So this would be uh, 24%. A student lives in a dorm but doesn't have a meal program. Let's see, so they live in the dorm but they don't have the meal program. So that would be outside right here. So 14%, okay? My Venn diagram is how I can show my work here. So now we're gonna get into the more complicated probability, which is the given probability. So we write it like this, probability that B given A. So the probability of B happening given that A has already occurred, okay? So we can bring it down to a formula, right? If you just look at these numbers here, it can be confusing. A lot of people mess up what goes underneath, okay? The probability of B given A is equal to the probability of both over the probability of the given, okay? Maybe I should write that a little nicer, maybe in a different color so it stands out, okay? So that's the probability of both of them happening over the probability of the given. That's just how it always sticks with me, okay? So notice that the probability of A can't be zero. Obviously, we can't divide by zero, and obviously, if we're asking how, what's the likelihood of B happening, knowing A happened, if A didn't happen, then B is not going to happen, <laughs> right? So hopefully that makes sense, okay? So let's do an example. So we have, while dining in a campus facility open only to students with meal programs, you meet someone new. What's the probability that they live on campus? So this is the probability that um, someone lives on campus given they have a meal program. So that's the probability of both over probability of the given, which in this case 
is a meal program. You know they have a meal program. That's why they're at that, um, that dining opportunity. Okay, so the probability of both is right here, 0.42. And we divide that by the meal, which is 62. So 0.62. So, oh goodness, I don't have my calculator in front of me. All right, 0.42 divided by 0.62. So we get 67% if we're rounding. 67.7%. Um, if we're keeping it as a fraction, that can simplify to, what, 21 over 31? Okay. Either probability would work. I'd probably lean towards the fraction because it's more exact. Independence. All right. Independence is super important to understand. What it's saying is that one event doesn't affect the outcome of another, okay? So the probability of B occurring, given that A has happened, is still the probability of B. A didn't affect B. That would be kind of like in a um, perfect scenario, right? That makes things easy, right? What's the probability that I roll a seven given that I flipped a coin and got heads? It doesn't change, okay? Understand independence, all right? If we have independence, then we can use the multiplication rule. If we don't have independence, excuse me, this does not work. So the probability of A and B happening means I can just do probability of A times the probability of B. I can just multiply, super simple. Only works if they're independent. You have to understand these definitions, okay? If they're super big right now. Independence, disjoint. They're not the same thing. Understand the difference, okay? Another word for disjoint is mutually exclusive, okay? So disjoint events cannot be independent, okay? So um, think about what a disjoint event Things cannot happen simultaneously. One event can't happen at the same time. But notice, if one of happened, then the other one is not going to happen. Okay, so like if I get on a kayak, I either fall into the water or I don't fall into the water. Okay, that's mutually exclusive. Okay, um, they can't be independent because... If I didn't fall in the water, then that means I obviously fell in the water, okay? One is affecting the other one, okay? Um, again, big issue, don't multiply rules. Um, don't use the multiply, multiplication rule for independent events. Biggest issue. Understand the difference here. The probability of both happening for mutually exclusive is zero, probability for independent events is the multiplication rule. All right, make some flashcards, memorize that. All right, so hopefully I scared you enough about accidentally multiplying when you shouldn't. So how do we check it? We can use our given rule, right? Probability of B given A must be the probability of B and vice versa, okay? Usually our intuition, we can figure things out, all right? but we can always double check it with this simple multiplication. Okay, so let's see. Um, college students live on campus. Okay, back to the campus meal program. So let's do the probability of a meal program given they live on campus. So that's the probability of both over the probability that they live on campus. So that's 0.42, they live on campus is 0.56, and is that the same as the probability of a meal? That's what we're checking. That has to be equal to the probability of meal. So the probability of a meal is 0.62. 
something tells me that's not going to be the same. So what do we get? 0.42 divided by 0.56 is 0.75. So it's not equal. All right, let's try it again. Okay, so that was probability of one given um, the other. And now I'll show you the other way. So the probability that they live on campus given they have a meal program. We did this one earlier, but we'll do it again. Probability of both over the probability of a meal program. So that is 0.42 over 0.62. And what was that? Oop. 0.42 divided by 0.56. No, oh, I did the wrong one. Point 0.42 divided by 0.62 was roughly 0.677. There we go. And that does not equal the probability that they live on campus, which is um, 56. So based on both of these, hopefully you can see that's why this is, these are not independent. Okay, so living on campus and eating a meal program, they're related to each other, which makes sense. Okay. All right, so now that we've answered that the independence, okay, so they're not independent, let's look at the second question, which is, are they disjoint? Okay, no, all right, because they can happen at the same time. All right, next one. Okay, so apparently this is where I think people are breaking down when it comes to probabilities. This is when it gets tricky. They mess up when it comes to independence, okay? If I haven't stressed it enough, stop and ask whether you think they are really independent, okay? always always important if i haven't stretched it enough put some stars around this slide all right so let's do some examples all right so study this so now are being male and having a supervision job disjoint events well no because those things can happen at the same time for instance a male and a supervisor well there's eight people there's an overlap okay so no eight people are both supervisors whoo yeah and male all right is having a supervisor's job independent of the sex of employee well let's check okay again we're doing the supervision all right versus the sex of the employee. So the probability, um, let's see, the probability that they are female given they have a supervisor job. Is equal to 12 out of 20. Okay, there are 12 females out of 20, and that is 0.6, and the probability that they are female is, let's see, there are 6 plus 12 plus 72, um, what is that, 90 out of 150, which is... 3 out of 5, which is 0.6. There we go. Check it the other direction. So the probability that they're male, given their supervisor position, so that would be 8 out of 20, right, or 0.4. The probability that they are male, well, this should be the opposite, right? Okay, so that would be 
0.4. We can double check it, add up the males. There are 60 out of 150, which that should add up to one. Okay, and so should that. So it looks like these are equal and those are equal. So they are independent of each other. Doesn't matter if you're male or female even though it may look like it, right? It's proportions based on the entire division. Okay, all employees. All right, so what do we do? We've got this um, drunk driving example. So do we make a table or a Venn diagram? What do you think? <laughs> oh, um, it depends. Depends on how you want to do it. I'll be honest. Um, it's really just start going with one way and see if it works right you gotta love that statistics ambigu ambiguity <laughs> all right so let's do it for this example so we're told what 78 percent of suspect drivers get a breath test so um so that's just 78 percent of people so i'm gonna put that as 0.78 right here well, if 0.78 get a breath test, then that obviously means 0.22 don't. And it would make sense that 100% would be right here. Again, you could do this as percentages or decimals. It really doesn't matter. Okay. Um, I would do I would do the decimals so we indicate that it's a percentage or put little percent signs, whatever. Okay. 36% um, a blood test and 22% got both. So let's do the 36% got a blood test. Oh, my decimal goes there. So that would mean that 0.64 would have not gotten the blood test. And then the last one, 22% got both. So that would be here. Well, 22% got both, 36% um, should even out this column, right? This should be the total for those two. So that means this would be point, um, here, let me do the last color. What haven't I done? Um, red, I guess. Okay, so this is what they haven't given us. So 22 and 36, so that means this has got to be point 0.14. 22 plus 14 is 36. 22 plus um, 56 is 78 and then here we can do it this way 56 and 8 make 64 also 14 and 8 make 22 that's one way to do it we could have also done it with a Venn diagram 22 percent would be in the middle um, then we have our breath test on one side, so that would be 78%. Um, so this this whole th circle is 78%, so that means this would be um, point, why can't I think? 78 minus 22, 6, 56. Oh, I also have it right here. Oh, silly. Okay, uh, <laughs> then the other side would be a blood test and 36% got a blood test, so again, that would be um, 14, would go here. All right, so 56 plus 22 plus 14 would then be on the, um, or 100% minus those would be on the outside. So is that 60, 70, 80, 92, so yeah, 8%. Oh yeah, well, right here, no and no, 8%. It's just another way of looking, ooh, that is not 8%, another way of looking at data. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense on how I filled those out. Depends. <laughs> okay, so great, what do we do when there's not independence? Okay, well, probably of A and B is just this. Okay, so this is a um, one way to go about it. So look at the example, see if you can use that for the formula, okay? All right, so for this one, what we can think of is we want the probability that it is rechargeable and it's defective.
Okay, so what I would do is I would do the probability that it's um, rechargeable times the probability that it's defective given it's rechargeable, right? Because we have that probability. We don't have the probability of it, what's the probability that it is a rechargeable battery given it's a defect? We don't know. So that's why I went with this one, okay? So understand which one you've gotta put first, okay? Use the probabilities that you have. So we know the probability of um, it being rechargeable is 0.25. The probability it's defective given it's rechargeable is 0.01. So that is 0.0025. All right, <clears throat> excuse me. Now what about a regular battery and it's not defective? Okay. So um, what we can do here if we're gonna say not defective, that's, that's the opposite, right? So if 2% um, if come off the line with a defect, then 98% are gonna come off without a defect, okay? So think about what we're trying to do here. We're doing the probability that it's a um, regular battery and it's not defective. So I'm gonna do defective, not defective, okay? The complement of defective given it's a regular battery, all right? Because we know the probability that it's a regular battery, okay? And we can do, I'm sorry, not equals, we can times the probability of this conditional statement, okay? What's the probability that it's a regular battery and it's not defective? Okay, so 98% of regular batteries come off without a defect. So that second part is 98. And the probability of it being a regular battery is 75. So our answer here would be 0 0.735. Okay. So think about what probabilities you have. You can't go the other direction in this case. All right, another type of probability where I start to lose kids, when I start drawing without replacement. Okay, so sampling without replacement means that once the individual is drawn, it doesn't go back in the pool. So usually you see this with like drawing a deck of cards. Okay, if I let one kid draw a card and they get a king, and I let them keep it, and then the next kid gets to draw a card, well now the odds of them getting a king is less, okay? So um, they affect each other here. We often do this. Um, if we're doing like a really, 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 really big population, or like I say we had like this massive deck of cards, like I had a million cards, all right? Does it really matter if one person grabbed the king and then you came next, okay? We're talking 50, say there were 50 kings, 50 out of a million, and the next one would be 49 out of 999,999. That's pretty much the same probability, okay? So it doesn't really matter with a huge population, okay? So when we do a small population, take note Okay, it's going to affect your outcome, but in the long run, right, with these huge, not long run, sorry, that was the wrong word, it, however, with a huge, huge sample, okay, doesn't really matter. Okay, so let's do the small run, okay, or small amount, small sample. Why do I keep saying run? Sorry. So we have a bag of Skittles, okay. What are the odds that the first two Skittles are orange? Well, I grab an orange one. There's five options out of 20. My next candy that I can take out has only a four out of 19 chance. So we multiply, okay? So we end up with one out of 19. All right, the next one, that none of the uh, first candies is green. 
Well, if seven are green, there are 13 that are not green. The next one you pull, um, next candy that you pull out is either going to, it's going to be 12 out of 19 candies. The third candy you take is going to be 11 out of 19. You keep going down with um, what you're taking out. Okay, so pay attention to how you do that. Um, let's see, what does this come out to be? All right, it comes out to be, oh, roughly, sorry, I should put my little about sign, 0.25. So about 25% chance that the first three candies um, aren't green. Sounds kind of surprising, right? Especially when there are a lot of greens in there. All right, another drawing or example, whatever, picture <laughs> is a tree diagram. These are super, super helpful too. They show a sequence of events. So if one, if you're doing one outcome after another, okay? So you, you have, you start with your original um, or starting point and then it branches off and you've got your probabilities listed on the arrows and then the outcome is always at the end. So here we've got a coin flip example. So the first coin we flip is either heads or tails. Then the second coin we flip is either heads or tails. Notice this 0.5 probability is just for the second flip. And then to get the entire one after another, they're probably getting a head and then another head, is just 0.5 times 0.5. Isn't that convenient? That's another way of going about doing it, is doing, is just multiplying the branches out. Okay, and these are your, um, your conclusions, the probability of this happening in this sequence. All right, so let's actually make one. So let's see. Wearing a seatbelt and escaping injury or not. Whew, this is a rough one. Okay, so let's, let's do the tree diagram. Think about it. All right, let's start with the first thing that happens. There's an accident, okay? In the accident, what can you do? Well, wear your seatbelt or not wear your seatbelt. 77% wear a seatbelt, okay? So I put 0.77 there, 0.23 there. Notice that should add up to one. I either wear a seatbelt or I don't. The next thing that could happen is I could either have injury or not, serious injury or not. So with a seatbelt, I could have injured or not. No belt, I could be injured or not. Okay, so 92% of those drivers escaped serious injury. Okay, we're wearing a seatbelt. So 92% of those drivers wearing a seatbelt, um, wearing a seatbelt they escaped injury. So 92% right here, seatbelt drivers escaped serious injury. Then this one would have to be 8%. 63% of those not wearing escaped injury. 63% here, 37% there. So we go down the line. The seatbelt injured, seatbelt okay, no belt injured, no belt okay. And we can get those probabilities by multiplying them out. So what is the probability that someone is seriously injured in an accident? So if they are seriously injured, well where are they seriously injured? They're injured right here and right here. Okay, so we're getting the probability that they were injured given they had a seatbelt plus the probability that they were injured given they weren't wearing a seatbelt, the complement. So that is 0 0.0616 plus 0 0.851. I don't know what that is. Getting out my calculator. Okay, point zero 
616 plus point zero eight five one, fourteen sixty seven. 1467. That's a rough seven. Oh, why am I trying to put percentage? Okay, so that's about 15%. So that's 15% chance that someone's in an accident, whether or not they wore a seatbelt. I don't really like those odds either. Okay, next one. What is the probability that the driver who was seriously injured wasn't wearing a seatbelt? All right, so the driver who, who was seriously injured wasn't wearing a seatbelt. So they weren't wearing a seatbelt but they, um, they were seriously injured. That would be this one. Probability, they were injured. My bad, I totally read that backwards. Okay, gotta watch out for probability, read things incorrectly. So even I do it, okay? So be careful. So what's the probability that a driver who was seriously injured wasn't wearing a seatbelt? So be careful how we're reading that. That's the probability. Um, they were, they, we know they were injured. So what's the probability that they were wearing a seatbelt given they were injured? That's not what we have in our, ven um, in our tree diagram, okay? So we have to be careful here, okay? We may not have it based in this diagram, but we can do it based on the probabilities that we have, all right? The probability that a given formula, you can do the probability of both over the probability that they're injured. So the probability of belt and injured, okay? So wearing a, um, the seat belt and wasn't wearing a seat belt. No belt. That's the compliment. Sorry, I just realized I read that wrong. <laughs> I keep doing that. So this would be no belt and injured. No belt and injured. So 0, 8, 5, 1 over the probability that they are injured. Okay, and that's 0. 0.1467, right? That's where we got it over here, okay? The probability that someone is seriously injured. We'd have to do all this stuff if we hadn't asked this question already. We divide, we get 58 or 58%. So the if someone was seriously injured, they, it was a 58% chance they weren't wearing their seatbelt. All right, I'm, wear the seatbelt, okay? Okay, so for my super mathy people that really likes to see how things are done, you could use Bayes rule. Feel free to, you know, look that up and do that, okay, which is this extended alternative, okay? So instead of using the tree, we could write out the calculation algebraically. So instead of mul using that multiplying and then adding things up, we could use Bayes rule. Sure, you could do that. Or you could just do the tree diagram. You do you, man. Whatever. Okay? All right. This is the uh, last thing. What can go wrong? Okay. Don't assume independence or disjoint without checking that they are. You have to check this and you have to know how to check it. Go ahead and make 7,000 flashcards that all say that same thing because you need to know this. Okay? Understand the difference. All right, don't find probabilities uh, for samples drawn without replacement as if they had been drawn with replacement always check for replacement. Don't reverse the condition naively. All right, that last question we did, um, this green one right here, this is reversing the condition. So understand that you can't just follow your tree diagram at that, you have to follow your formula rules. Okay, and again, if I haven't said it enough times, don't confuse disjoint with independent. Whew. Okay, I think that's all I got to say. Um, I don't know. If I think of anything else, I'll let you know. All right. I'll see you in class.